Welcome to the home of Blood, Sweat, and Words, a podcast that empowers writers. My name is Joanne Carson. I'm a fiction and nonfiction author, blogger, and podcaster, and I'm trying to make sense of the writing world today. My weekly show is current, relevant, and above all, honest. Join me, and we'll talk it to the bone. That's what Blood, Sweat, and Words is all about. From Vancouver Island, Canada, this is Episode 3 on Blood, Sweat, and Words, and I'm your host, Joanne Carson. Do you ever wonder where writers get their ideas? Today, I'm talking with J.C. McKenzie, who is a high school math and science teacher by day and an urban fantasy and paranormal romance author by night. She's the creator of the Amazon best-selling dark fantasy saga, the Karis series, set in post-apocalyptic Vancouver. She's the author of nine books, soon to be ten, and is an unapologetic science geek. Which brings (laughs) me to today's topic, science geek to author. How are you doing, JC? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, so, is it fair to call you a science geek? Oh, um, absolutely. It's fair to call me a science geek. And uh, as you mentioned, I'm very unapologetic about it. I um, have friends who mute me on Facebook because I uh, share too many Facebook uh, science posts. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. And... Uh, yeah, I um not only do I have a I have a degree in animal physiology from Simon Fraser, but I just I love science. So, it's, I think it's a fantastic subject. So, when did you first become so passionate about science? You know, you're probably a better person to answer this question than I am. So, <laughs> for listeners who might not know us, um, you are my mom, and so it's probably very hard for you to call me JC. Uh, and so, you, I, I think right from infancy, really, from as a, at a young age, I brought you home a, a dead sawwood owl and demanded that you fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember um, that. Yeah, and my sister and I went and caught bullhead um, from the river out in the bay in front of us and brought them home, and those poor things, we dissected them, and them <laughs> up and did all sorts of uh, unauthorized scientific experiments on them on the, the back deck and stuff. So we, um, yeah, I just have always had a fascination for understanding the world around me and for understanding things that I could see and hear and just wanted to find, you know, explanations for that. And I think it had a lot to do with growing up on the Haida Gwaii and being surrounded by all that beautiful nature and that environment and having wonderful parents uh, (laughs) that really um, cultivated that and cultured uh, that desire to understand within me, you know, didn't hold me back or make me feel weird that I was collecting fish and bring them home and <laughs> so I think that all kind of adds to it you know yeah I have to say when I when you came home with the saw with owl I, I just didn't know what to say my mouth dropped about a mile and I kept thinking oh my goodness oh my goodness was, what do I say there was this? no obvious causes of death it was perfectly preserved <laughs> I didn't understand why it was dead <laughs> yeah you, you were pretty young yeah that, that yeah. was that was a fun time um, so what things in science interest you the most? Um, the interesting thing, well, I, to be honest, all the weird stuff. I just, <laughs> you know, there's that saying out there that weird is a side effect of awesome, and I have embraced that quote because it gets me through the day. Um, because I just love all the weird things. Like, you know, that um, that geckos lick their eyeballs to keep them moistened. Like, oh, really? <laughs> yes. Ducks have corkscrew penises. No, you're never going to look at that duck the same way in the park, you know, that (laughs) um, how snakes move, how, um, you know, you think that big cats like the lynx are really good at smelling, but in fact, they're actually rely more on sight and hearing and just things like that. Like, I just find things in nature fascinating and, um, and the things that make other things in nature different than humans or different from what we consider normal is what really fascinates me. So I want to know why. Why do they do that? And so how does this affect your writing? <laughs> um, well, I try to put it all in. And what's nice about 
uh, the genre I've picked, paranormal romance and urban fantasy, is that I get to create my world. And I think that's why I gravitate towards the shifters so much, is and that I have these humans that can uh, transform into animals. And then I get to bring my passion for animals and animal physiology, uh, we're in degrees in, and uh, <laughs> bring that in and weave it into my stories. So it, I, mostly it comes into... Uh, my character creation, so how, uh, what kind of shifter my characters are. Um, I, I'm currently writing a series about a raven shifter, so, you know, ravens are really, really intellectual creatures. Uh, they can mimic uh, human speech. Uh, they also really like shiny things. Uh, so I have all that woven into my character's creation um, and her, you know, personality ticks. It also comes into play with my world building. So um, with my Kara series that's out and finished, um, it's a post-apocalyptic. But what caused the um, apocalypse really was um, Earth's defense system finally just getting having enough of humans being terrible. And so I, I wrote, I wrote a, a, I have the section. I don't, I don't think I'll, I'll read it, but... Uh, basically, the idea was that natural disasters and viruses were Earth's natural defense system. And I got the idea from The Hot Zone, which is written by Richard Preston. It's a book that I make my biology students read. Most students love the fact that I make them read the first bit of it because it's very gruesome. And I have a couple of reluctant learners and readers that don't appreciate that task. But it's a fabulous book, especially the intro, which goes over how the, um, the intro character gets uh, exposed to Marburg virus, which is related to all the Ebola viruses. And um, Richard Preston makes an, a fantastic argument in his book about how viruses are Earth's natural defense against the human infection. So if you think about how our bodies have white blood cells that attack a, an invading um, pa pathogen, we could look at viruses as being the antibi antibodies attacking this human infection. And because with these massive outbreaks of Ebola and these incredibly uh, deadly viruses uh, that get come out, um, like the Lassa virus, uh, Ebola Zaire, Ebola Sudan, um, they all come out when we go into areas that don't have a lot of human population. So that's that was his argument and I just thought that was fascinating so and my geek brain just could not handle it It was like my mind was blown and I just loved it and so I took that threw in natural disasters as well and basically said yeah earth woke up and said I'm done I'm I've had enough and she just obliterated pretty much 90 percent of the human population with these viruses and natural disasters which led to the exposure of all these supernatural beings because of course they're not as vulnerable to viruses and diseases and natural disasters. So that's how I created my Karis world and how I brought in my science geek ness. <laughs> it and it worked really well. Um, and are there other passions in your life that spill onto the page? Um yeah, I other passions I um I don't know if you would call them passions uh so much as just my my life uh experiences um like for example my um my story that's coming out this fall uh it involves a lynx shifter and she owns and operates a cafe and i used to work in a cafe i used to be the barista i used to make the cappuccinos and the lattes and all the specialty handcrafted beverages uh, so I bring in my life experiences from that um, uh, because I, I you're always should write something of what you know, and I feel like I, I don't know what it's like to be a nurse, so, but I do know what it's like to be a coffee barista. <laughs> like I do know what it's like to be a waitress. So my other series that I'm working on right now, my main character is a server, and she has a lot of waitress pet peeves, and I've had a <laughs> lot of fun putting those in because. I started to hate people when I was a waitress, um, but not in a bad way, just in a, you get kind of sick of the same thing always happening, and you have to remind yourself that this customer doesn't know what the last 50 customers did the exact same thing, but, um, 
I get to bring that all in too. So I don't know if that's passion so much as just life experiences, but I do bring in my past jobs that helped put me through university. And um, yeah, I like, I like doing that because I think it makes it more authentic. So uh, do you have any other um, suggestions for new, new writers about how to make their writing come alive? Um, well, I think, I think that I, I kind of covered it. I think bringing in your own passion, my passion for science and, and my own life experiences are, are crucial. I I mean, it's important not to make your character you. Uh, I'm very, very careful not to make my characters me because that's kind of weird because you're putting them in really weird situations and stuff. But, um, so I'm not saying make your character who you are, but give them, give them experiences that you are familiar with or know something about. I mean, I could research till I'm blue in the face what it's like to be an orthopedic surgeon, but at the end of the day, do I really understand the nitty-gritty details of what they go through? Um, It's not really going to read authentic uh, to the reader, whereas I could talk about, I could have a character who was a teacher or who was a waitress or who was on a fishing boat um, because I was a fisheries observer for a bit there I, it sounded like I know what it tasted like I know what it smelled like I know what it felt like I know all those sensory details that you can't really get from researching from a book so um, I think that it's really important for readers to draw in on their own personal experiences and, and you know um, sorry writers and some writers might feel that they don't have um, personal experiences to write. I mean, who wants to read about a, a barista? But I do. So <laughs> I I do. And I think that you can make it interesting, right? So, I mean, I've never been an owner or operator of a coffee shop, but I have worked in one and I have known owners and operators of coffee shops. So I felt like that was a good um, avenue to go in. So I think my challenge is going to be after I've run out of um, – my current series, what occupations am I going to give my current? <laughs> I'm running out of my past lives and my past jobs I've worked. So, Well, I think people be... really relate to those jobs. And, um, yeah, I do. And you still use your imagination a lot because, of course, you haven't been um, uh, some of the characters you're creating. You, I shifters. have not been a multiple shifting um, supernatural being, no. It's on my, <laughs> it's on my bucket list. It's but there, but that, it's, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what's like feelings. Yeah. So, what, so what's <laughs> happening in your creative life right now? What are you working on right now? Right now, I am working on two things. I am working on the finishing touches of The Good Griffin, which will be out on November 13th, which is a very special day in our household. <laughs> I, uh, I like that date. Yes. Um, <laughs> Divine Carson's birthday, people. So, uh, but <laughs> my, also my release date this, this year for The Good Griffin It's um, a short story. It's around 40,000 words right now. So it's not like a a thick novel, but it's not like a novella either. It's kind of in that middle zone. It's paranormal romance. I always tend to write my romances a little on the shorter side. A little bit less plot, a little bit more romance, you know. So it's, uh, (laughs) um, you know, and so it's a, um, it features a, the hero is a griffin, and he's not exactly good all the time. Um, and there is a lynx shifter, which is uh, the object of his affections, but he thinks he hates her, or he should, no, sorry. He thinks she hates him, and she really wants to hate him, but she can't because she loves them and so it's all about that kind of dynamic of where they're both trying to kind of hold themselves back and then this hex hits the town it's a shared world and it's called that old black magic and this other character from someone else's book releases this spell which causes everyone to forget what's holding them back forget their inhibitions and just go for what they want go for their heart's desire and that happens in my art story so that's um Oh, I love that's that just, hex. Yeah. That, oh, that can lead to yeah. so much not, story. That must be not wild. Not just hex appeal, yeah. but our tagline, <laughs> which cracks me up. Um, so it's Melissa Snark's uh, Shared World. It's uh, her creation, and it's been so much fun working uh, with her and the other authors in the group. And my story features her villain. So my hero is her villain. Uh, <laughs> so he's very, very bad in her story, but he's 
very good mind <laughs> most of the time. So that's that's what I'm one of the projects I'm working on. I've already written it. I'm I've gone through. I'm just kind of adding some extra scenes, and it's going to go to beta readers, and then it's um, I'm going to be putting up the um, the buy link soon because uh, it's that's fast approaching. And then I'm currently working on my urban fantasy series uh, that I'm finished the first book for I am trying to shop it to um, some publishers I've already tried shopping to agents and I'm finding it really very resistant um, I'm getting a lot of form rejection which is the unpleasant Aww. part but it's part of the industry I um, don't want to necessarily go through the same publisher I went through with my Kara series just because I want to broaden my readership and I think going with the same publisher would get me the same readers which I love and appreciate but there are probably are going to pick up my book I want to try to get out to even more readers so that's why I want to go somewhere else but if not I will self-publish it or maybe go through my original uh, my first publisher and yeah so that's what I'm working on I don't really want to say much more about that one because it's kind of still oh you got me intrigued I love this hex it's going to make them all get very lively um, very lively <laughs> and a lot uh, shenanigans going on <laughs> so where can people find you in your books uh you can find uh, all my books are available on amazon uh my first book shift happens in the care series is only available on amazon because it got bought out by amazon from my publisher but all the other books in the care series are available wide so all the major online media tailors uh, you can find me on social media, but if it's easier, just go to jcmckenzie.ca and you can find all the social media links. It's jcmckenzie.ca, and uh, yeah, that's where they can find me. And and uh, before you go, just two more questions. What okay. are you reading right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, maybe I shouldn't ask. <laughs> Well, because it's almost the end of summer, which is terrible. I am reading Foundations of Mathematics 11. Oh, no. <laughs> my, my slow torture of students in September. So I'm very, very unfun right now. And, and oh, how I'm is the so plot? Sorry. <laughs> the plot is terrible. <laughs> I still remember the physics textbook mm -hmm. I got first year, and I loved it because it actually talked about the um, physicists and their personal lives, and it cracked me up because I never knew any of that stuff about them. Them, but the math, the math foundations textbook is a little dry. <laughs> oh, yeah, that sounds <laughs> a little wanting. Yeah, right definitely. Vented. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Sorry, on to something I more lively. What is your favorite cocktail? My favorite cocktail um, is the mojito. I love drinking the mojito. I think it is the perfect summer drink, but I also drink it year round. Um, <laughs> One, I love uh, white rum, and I just, I love the mint in it, and I love the lightness of it. Um, you can drink it with or without the rum. <clears throat> I prefer it with the rum, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's great, and it has a bit of sugar in it, but you can, instead of having the lime, you could add any kind of squishable fruit, so I like, I like raspberry mojitos, I like blueberry mojitos, I like the lime mojito, I, I just like, um, I don't like watermelon mojitos that to me is just wrong it's perversion <laughs> of the watermelon in my opinion but other than that I uh, love pretty much every flavor of mojito you can get well we've got your recipe on the sh in the show notes so people can try it and they can think about you when they're drinking try it. my squishable fruit mojito recipe <laughs> <laughs> it's very unoriginal it's very basic but I, that's what I like about it too it's not you don't you have to stick it in a special canister and shake it three times and swirl it and do all this crazy stuff you just push stuff in the bottom of your cup add some ice and throw in your soda water and you're good to go and it tastes good okay and people might just think you're drinking flavored water in public they might mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a final word um i i don't have a final word i just like to thank you so much for inviting me on to your podcast it's very exciting to have one that's dedicated to the publishing world and writing uh, today that's not you know super dated and stuff so i really really appreciate it and jc mckenzie you are most welcome and that brings today's episode to a close next week i'll be interviewing abigail owen an author and an op entrepreneur and the topic is authors helping authors Thanks for listening. Now it's your turn. 
What do you think about today's topic? You can leave comments on my website or email me directly. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to know more about me, check out my podcast website, bloodsweatandwords.com. You can also sign up for my weekly newsletter, which contains writing tips and information about upcoming episodes. You get a free book if you do. Now, if you really, really enjoyed the show, and I hope you did, consider becoming one of my patrons through Patreon and help me pay the podcasting bills. Information is in the show notes and also on the Patreon site. I leave you today with a quote from Albert Einstein. Creativity is intelligence having fun. And that's a wrap. See you between the lines.